Hey, I thought I'd make a quick video about QR codes, and that's because I, I've heard uh, some confusion around them from some of my students. So QR codes are just barcodes. Uh, this is a barcode that you've seen before, probably on something that you bought. It's basically just uh, these stripes equate to the number that's underneath. Uh, it's that simple. So it, you can even see here, there's one, 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 one in the number. And if you look, there's thin stripe, thick stripe, thin stripe, thick stripe. Each one of those thin stripe, thick stripe pairs is the number one. Uh, QR codes work the same way. They're encoding something. They could encode a number. Typically what they're encoding is a URL. And so if you look at this generator here, qr.io, uh, this isn't one that I use, but it's you know pretty typical of what they look like. Um, you can put in other kinds of things other than just a link. So you can put in an email or uh, contact information, V card. Um, but in all cases, it's taking whatever data is there and it's turning it into text that gets encoded. Most people are trying to encode a URL. And so there are a few things to recognize. One is if I put a long URL in here, it makes a pretty dense looking um, QR code. And again, this is uh, just a barcode. It's just a 2D barcode. So instead of just going left to right, it goes left to right and up down. So um, this is the kind of QR code that you'll often see people make. And when they print it out, it's just so fine that it doesn't scan well when you point your phone at it. So the way to make it more legible is to make it a shorter URL. The less text, the less dense it is. And um, one thing that's worth knowing is if I remove some of this URL, it doesn't actually change how dense it is. And that's because just removing one character or two isn't gonna do it. There's just kind of brackets. So once you get down to something much shorter, uh, you'll see that it kind of becomes less complex. And then if I can get it really short, uh, maybe just <laughs> www.com, uh, we'll see that it's it's simpler still. And every barcode reader that I've encountered on a phone or whatever will also work if you just even remove the HTTPS in the beginning, the colon slash slash with it. So, you know, that's, that's as simple as it gets though. It doesn't get any simpler than that. But uh, this, even though it doesn't have HTTPS colon slash slash, most or all barcode readers that I've seen know that you're trying to encode a URL, so it'll still work. So that's one way to get it a little bit shorter. And, you know, if you had a long link in here and removing just that little bit made a difference in how dense it was, then you'd want to do that. So um, how do you get a short URL? If you're at FSU, you can use the FSU uh, URL shortening service. Uh, you can also use Bitly. Uh, you know, I think both of those are probably pretty safe because they're going to be around for a while. Bitly's been around forever, and I expect it to be around forever. Uh, they're both free ways of doing it, but this is how people get this confusion about barcodes or QR codes. Some of my students thought that they expire. So you make a QR code, you put it on something, and then, you know, six months from now, you try it again, and it doesn't work anymore. But as I've described it, it's just this text in a barcode. So there's no way that it would expire or stop working unless this URL stops working. So why are people experiencing that? It's because there are often additional features that these uh, QR code generators offer you. So for one, you might want like a, your logo in there, or you might want to track the number of times people scan it. Once you start doing those things, it's no longer encoding the URL that you asked it to. It's making its own URL that's on this company's servers. And um, it's probably going to ask you to pay. And then uh, what it'll do is when, you know, that URL that they make is probably a short one. So it's a nice, simple barcode that it'll create. Someone scans it. And what it does in the background is maybe track the number of scans or, you know, some other features, and then eventually sends them to the URL that you wanted. The problem, of course, comes in if you ever stop paying this company, uh, that URL might be broken. Or uh, if the company goes out of business, you know, you've, these barcodes are pointing to something that doesn't exist anymore. So the best way to make sure that you're isolated from that is once you make the QR code, scan it with your phone and see what URL it tells you. It should show you the same thing that you typed in. If it shows you something else, something that you didn't recognize, then it's going through another service first. So that's one way you can keep from having these URLs that seem to just stop working at some point. Um, a couple other generators, this Adobe one, I've never used it until today. It's actually pretty cool. It's like, you know, as you're typing the URL, um, it creates it, which is nice because you can see the moment where it gets more complicated. Did you see that jump? 
So there's, um, yeah, so I would say that's that's handy and you can just download it. It's the same thing. They'll probably offer you other options and maybe some of them require that you pay them, but it actually looks like this one is has a lot of features that are pretty free, at least in terms of style and color. Um, the kinds of things that it won't be free will things will be things like tracking the number of scans and geographic location of people who scanned it, stuff like that. It's also some of these fancier um, options. Again, it's just text that's getting encoded, but there are special kinds of text that could get enc encoded, like a V card, which is like contact information. Phones or whatever scanner reader you're using is smart enough to recognize like, oh, this is contact information. So instead of just launching a web browser on your phone, it'll open like your contact contacts uh, and ask if you want to add it. So um, some of these things are fine, but you know, the fancier ones like, um, I think there was one in here that said, is this the one? One of them had like multiple URLs. I don't see it now, but um, well, here's a good example, images, right? So you, you can't encode an image in a QR code, but if you sign up for this service, they will give you a URL that then points to some images that you upload, that kind of thing. So when you see something like that, as soon as you're signing up for something, then you just have to realize that there could be a time in the future where that barcode goes to a company that no longer exists or a company that you decided not to pay for anymore. So you wanna make sure that when you scan it, it's actually going to the place that you uh, typed in. Um, what else? I think um, the other thing, well, Oh, so it, I guess maybe it's worth mentioning Bitly, I think is a trusted place. I've, I've used this for, I feel like decades at this point to make short, short URLs. But once I get that short URL, I would end up going to another QR code generator. And um, I wouldn't use the QR code generator that Bitly has because that is one of those situations where they make their own URL for you. So um, the one that I use is called the-qrcode-generator.com. And even this one is the same thing. Here's the thing I was looking for. So if you put in a URL, it's going to just give you um, give you the standard QR code and you can download it in different formats. It's great. But once you start trying to make some, you know, put your logo in it or something, or uh, if you wanted to do something like a, a weird kind of thing that's not, you know, just text being encoded, like multiple URLs, uh, once you try and do something like that, it says, well, you can only do that with dynamic codes. So when they offer you a dynamic code or some other kind of fancy QR code, just realize that they're offering to make a URL for you and then encode it in the barcode. So those are the kinds of things that you would want to avoid if you want it to be uh, to last forever. Um, they all say that they're free forever and they're going to last forever, but who knows, maybe this website just disappears at some point and then you're kind of stuck. So. Um, that's about it. Hopefully that makes sense. If you have any questions, you could email me and uh, try to answer it. Take care.